from WLWT, this is Issues. Hello, welcome to Issues. I'm Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney of Sesh Communications and the Cincinnati Herald. So many great guests this morning. I'm just really excited about this. Uh, a little later, we're going to talk to a mother-daughter dynamic duo with a great book and lots more about gymnastics and all kinds of opportunities for your children. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're also going to talk about another great opportunity for your children, Aim High Achievers, started by some young folks, and they are making a difference in the schools, so you want to definitely hear from them. First, we're going to go to the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center's Deputy Director, Jacqueline Dace. Welcome, Jacqueline. Oh, I thank you very I'm much. I'm so glad you're here, and you are new. You, uh, Dion Brown, our new Executive Director, brought you here because you're so dynamic, <laughs> and you're great at organizing things and, and, and making things happen, and we're excited about the new energy at the Freedom Center. Thank you. We're excited excited about the energy as well. Yeah. It's a wonderful space. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot going on, but let's talk about this exhibit, Mandela. Yes. And and let me get the name right because it's Mandela, the journey to Ubuntu. The journey to Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about that. And that just opened and you're extending it through through February, right? Right. Okay. We're going to extend it through the end of February, February 28th. If you look at our website, it says it closes on January the 1st, but okay. we're going to extend it. I'm so glad. Um, it, I am as well, yeah. because it is celebrating the 100th year birthday of Nelson Mandela. Wow, so he um, would be 100 this he year? He would have been 100 wow. years old this year. We are working uh, the uh, his commissioned photographer, Matthew Wilman, worked with the Nelson Mandela Foundation out of South Africa. Um, and it's several images within the exhibit that had not been seen before. Wow. This exhibit was actually developed by the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. Wonderful. And so this is its second iteration at the museum. Wow. Um, and it's a wonderful space. You actually get an opportunity to see the jail cell that Mandela spent um, almost two decades in. Wow. Well, you see a replica of the jail right, cell. It's yeah. not the actual jail cell. But you but actually get the feel for you get the feel what for that was it. like. And one of the things that we added, we added a component to the uh, exhibit as it returned this time, is that we have a electronic clock down of several events that happened over the 27 years that oh. Nelson Mandela was in prison. Oh, wow. Because, you know, people, you can hear 27 years, but you need to be able to relate it to something, right? right. Uh, so we have that as well within the space. But when visitors come, one of the things we want to make sure that they do is that when at the end of the, the uh, exhibit, there are rocks that represent several of the areas that Nelson Mandela traveled, uh -huh. uh, several of the places, including uh, Robben Island, where he was imprisoned. Right. Uh, so there are rocks that came from all of those places. Oh, and, really? But wow. he laid down his rock. He said that, you know, he wanted to lay down his rock, and what am I going to fight for? So we have a space right at the end of the exhibit. We have rocks available for our visitors. Wow. We have um, notes available so you can make a commitment. Lay down your rock. What are you willing to fight oh, for? Oh, I love that. Yes. That sounds so yes. inspirational. I yes. mean, not just for children, but for adults as well. For all of us. Because we all need to be out there making a change. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and it can be whether it's within your own neighborhood or whether it's on a worldwide stage, right. whether it's individual, whether it's in your family. Right. There but is work to be there done. There is work to be done. Oh, there is work goodness. to be done. I love that. And so the, the exhibit, it, it, I understand it's the last 10 years. So Matthew followed Nelson Mandela for the last 10 years of his life. Right. He was a commission. He yeah. was a commissioned photographer with Nelson Mandela. So you have some wonderful images of him, some wonderful stories right. of Nelson Mandela also. Now, in conjunction with the exhibit, we are currently in, in, in progress of creating a documentary. Oh, really? A documentary focusing on Nelson Mandela. Wow. Um, not only uh, the exhibit itself, we're talking about the exhibit, but we have uh, people in South Africa right now filming places wow. where Nelson Mandela spent a lot of his time. And we're going to put that together because we want to have some type of a permanent um, component of Nelson Mandela. So every year we'll be able to do something to celebrate his That life. is so great because, you know, his, his story is such a great part of the, of the freedom struggle throughout exactly. the world. Exactly. And so, um, you know, I just remember seeing people 
people lined up to vote and just, you know, blocks and blocks and blocks and right. some people being carried. And so, um, and kind of had that feeling during the Obama uh, mm -hmm. election in 2008 and mm -hmm. even 2012 here. But before that, I thought, wow, if we could do that here. And now I'm thinking if we could do that again, you know, <laughs> right, so, right, right. so seeing, seeing folks lined up to vote in South Africa mm -hmm. and really like determine um, to um, have a voice just, I mean, it's so impactful. And I'm so glad that you made the connection, you know, because oftentimes we can talk about what happened in South Africa and we don't make the connection as to what's happening in within our own space. Right. You know, because when we think about when Nelson Mandela was fighting or, or several of the periods, uh, 50s, 60s, the 40s, you know, he was in prison in the early 60s, but right. imagine what was going on in the United States in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Right. You had the rise of the modern civil rights movement. Right. You know, uh, a lot of the ideology and a lot of the, um, the, the processes that he used, they used also here in the United States. Right. So there is a natural connection between what was happening there and what was happening here. Because Absolutely. when you think about the fact that uh, uh, during that time period, African Americans had to, in many places, show their card that they were actually working within these communities uh, and didn't couldn't be there after five o'clock. You right. know, so yeah. that you know there was a system. Of, you had Jim Crow here. You had apartheid in, right. in South Africa. That's right. You this know. would be so exciting to see, and it's it's through the end of February, but people need to go now because it sounds to me like something you need to see several times. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, and there are docents there to help people. Uh, through through every exhibit, actually at the at the Freedom Center, I understand. Right, and you can you can request if you're coming in for a tour, you can request a tour guide. Uh, some of the exhibit, especially Nelson Mandela, you might want to spend your own time going through it. Right. Uh, but we also have programs that are throughout the day, almost on every day of the week, that are within the museum that are complementary to the exhibit itself. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, Jacqueline. You have to come back. Oh, sure. Oh, thank you so much. Stick with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so you're gonna love these next guests. Um, I'd like to introduce Jan Daniels and Daryl Mentia yes. Daniels. <laughs> um, and you're the author and you're the illustrator, mother-daughter team here for the book, My Flipping Yaya. And we're gonna talk about gymnastics and, and writing and illustrating <laughs> and your great background. But I know Yance wants to show us something. So, and she's not gonna make me do it. So I'm really happy <laughs> about, about that. So you take it away, Yance. Oh my goodness, whoa. Ooh, that was beautiful. <laughs> so we should say, Yas has a gymnastics academy, right? Yes, well, we um, took our program. We're in the city of Mason at the Mason Community Center. Oh, wait, wait, Jeff has to, Jeff, you know what, Jeff is gonna, and this is Jeff Moran, people always wonder, who's Jeff? <laughs> so here's Jeff, he's gonna mic you up so we can hear you, but you do have a gymnastics studio in Mason. Right. And you're also the, the director for the, what, Mason Twisters? Twister, yes, Mason Twisters, so. Mason Twisters, okay. Yeah, so basically, um, we do gymnastics at the Mason Community Center, it's called Mason Twisters and we compete throughout the U.S. Um, yeah. we can, we'll can be competing this December in the Bahamas, oh, but the wow. girls travel um, from Florida to Tennessee to Vegas, so we travel all over the U.S. I love that, because, and you know, we could see like how graceful you are. You're really doing the splits upside down in the air, so <laughs> gymnastics really incorporates not just acrobatics, but ballet and dance, and what a, you know, what great training for the body. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good to be old and flip. <laughs> oh my God, you're not old at all, but you do have this grown daughter here, <laughs> so which is pretty amazing. And Daryl, you, and we should say you went to FAMU and... Yes, I um, went to FAMU High University of Iowa okay. on a full ride gymnastics scholarship. Um, I toured professionally for five and a half years with Kurt Thomas. Wow. And then we opened um, Gym Express here in Mason and I mean in Westchester and then we 
Wu Chu Mason. Mason. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. then Daryl, tell us about your background. Well, I was also a competitive gymnast, and she was my coach for about 11 years. Wow. And then I ended up going to Ohio University and cheering there. And then I got my MFA in Fine Arts from the School of Visual Arts in New York. Wow. And you have an exhibit in Harlem. Tell us about that, because you've, you, you've made quite some accomplishments <laughs> yes. to be so young. <laughs> well, um, I've had a lot of shows around New York. I've been in the annual Harlem Arts Festival. Um, I've shown work at the Hull Gallery, I've shown work at La Maison d'Art, and um, I also have a studio in the Bronx. Wow. Oh, I know you're so proud. I'm very proud. <laughs> and I love the fact that the two of you got together and you have created this wonderful book. It's beautiful and it's called My Flipping Yaya. Yes. And here's the cover. <laughs> and I love the illustrations are by Daryl and Yance wrote it. And so tell us about this. Yaya is the grandmother. Is the right? grandmother. <laughs> okay. All right. So tell us about this story. Well, one morning I woke up and because I knew that my son was um, getting married soon and he was having a baby, um, I wanted to make sure that I was able to allow my grandchild to see what I did. And I wanted them to, him or her to be able to live that part of my life since both of my children did gymnastics with me. I wanted my grandchild to also be able to have that experience. Wow, and so the book is about, is really that journey of, of showing the grandchildren what it is that Yance does. Right, and it's <laughs> just to encourage children that you can do anything you put your mind to. If you wanna do gymnastics, if you wanna be a vet, if you wanna do art, just do it. And it just kinda pushes them, but the journey is for the child to see how the grandmother flips and they could do it too. I, lo I love that. I love the message. I mean, yeah. that's got to be really positive. And I've got to ask Daryl, what was it like growing up with a mom? Like <laughs> Always so, moving. Yes. <laughs> so um, she sounds like she would be so encouraging. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I started off doing gymnastics, but my whole family was very supportive of me wanting to do art. And so she told me right away, you look, if you want to do art, make sure you put all of your effort into this and you know you work really hard at it just like gymnastics so I still apply a lot of those values wow. to my art practice. That is so awesome and so how did you end up creating this book? I mean did you wake up one day and say I'm just gonna write a book? Pretty much. I, I, don't, have, I don't have anything else to do. I'm running the studio and <laughs> doing all this. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so pr that's pretty much how it happened. I woke up one morning and decided you know I, I really want to write this book and when I put the book together um, first thing I did was a couple of friends was like give me your, your take on this what do you think and then I called my daughter because I knew she could see my vision and right. she could put it into the drawings that I wanted and so she did and we collaborated on it I went back and forth to New York she came back home wow. and we put it together um, I had the book published um, it, it, within a matter of months and then um, now we're doing we have this hundred media book tour that That's we're fantastic. supposed to be doing so, so now cool. how, do, how do we find your book my flipping yaya my flipping yaya is on Amazon it's on Barnes and Nobles um, it will be at the bookseller um, we're doing an opening book signing there at, at Fountain Square oh, wonderful. Um, it's also on Ex Libris publications um, we go into different schools and do different book readings and signings oh, and demonstrations wonderful. for all the kids here in Cincinnati oh, as well. And so how do people get in touch with you if they say, you know, I want to I want to sign up my son or daughter for your gymnastics classes? You can call Mason Gymnastics, Mason Twisters at 513-229-8555. And tell us that number again. The number is 513-229-8555. Oh, wonderful. Yes. That's fantastic. So people can sign up for classes, maybe even get competitive and end up in the Bahamas. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Um, that's just, and, and you know, and you're in such great shape and we just saw you do whatever that was, <laughs> so, which I can't do, but that's fantastic. So this is gymnastics is a good way throughout life to really mm -hmm. stay in shape and, yes. and to be graceful. Are, are, are you still doing gymnastics at I'm all? I'm still doing yes. gymnastics. I'm still coaching gymnastics oh, you do? actually, okay. yes. So I coach in New York too. Wonderful. And, uh, to stay in shape, so yes. Oh, I'm <laughs> so excited. Okay, my flipping yaya. Yeah, we're going to all get that book and then we're going to sign up for a class. Okay. okay. <laughs> Stick with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you.
I just gave you a call. Welcome back. I was talking to Alexandra Bell and Jasmine Smith, and I was just laughing because I said, are you guys still in college? And they're like, no, they have their degrees already, but they look like they're in high school still. So anyway, but so Thanks. excited. That's a compliment. To, Thank you. Yeah, so excited to have you here. And also, you're, so you're co-founders of High Achievers Aim High. Yes. Okay, H-A-A-H. -A -H. And we should say the third uh, founder, co-founder is here, and she's um, Ashley Kennemore. And we're going to, we're going to let her come out and say hi at the end. She's going to sit with me during the during the calendar segment. Okay. But you guys are going to be the spokes the spokespeople today for this. So tell us, you know, who, what, tell us about your background. Yes. Well, Jasmine and I uh, started probably maybe three or four years ago, um, just making shirts, um, and we had an idea that we wanted to make an impact and make a difference within the urban community. So we got with Ashley Kennemore, and um, we were designing programs to help fight the achievement gap, poverty, obesity, and violence that plague the community. Oh my goodness, I love that. You know, I love that you guys are young people and you're just, you know, you're, you're making t-shirts and you're saying, this is good, this is a good business, but then we can do, more. we can do more. And so what does High Achievers Aim High do? Okay, so we have a bunch of empowerment programs. Uh, we just completed our first successful summer camp, uh, educational summer camp, where we had over 50 kids. Really? Yes, ma'am. We provided um, nutrition classes with uh, Closing the Health Gap and also uh, oh, partnered with OSU's nutrition program. Oh, wow. We had fitness with Leroy Dobbs and uh, Carmen as well, uh, Potnitz. Yeah. And uh, we also provided uh, free meals through Whole Again, a nonprofit organization. Uh, we provided free meals to all of our summer camp kids as well as kids in the community under 18, uh, breakfast and lunch. Oh, that's so great. Uh, La Soup helped us with uh, after school snacks, um, well, yeah, after our food. classes. Uh, they also had food for the parents to take home, so we had a pantry really? available. Really? Oh my goodness. Uh, we partnered with FC Cincinnati to get the kids active in soccer. If they, they, they really enjoyed that part. I bet they loved it, yeah. Yes, ma'am. We partnered with Cis, uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital to provide free swim lessons to our children this summer. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and since then, um, currently we're offering tutoring for students K through 12. Um, we also are working on our first peer mediation program with Clark Montessori and North Avondale Montessori that starts next week. So we're really excited about that. I, this is just so unbelievable. I mean, I'm looking at all the partners you have. You talked about Children's Hospital, Cincinnati Public Schools, Center for Closing the Health Gap, Whole Again. Um, I've missed somebody in there. But I mean, this is so fantastic that the three of you, and you're so young, you got together and you, you reached out to these corporate partners and, and you're making this happen. And you, you know, just getting back to the food issue, there's so many young people in the summer who really don't have food exactly. to eat. I mean, they're not in school, and so, you know, there's a lot of junk food because that's the cheapest that's thing and I also have. the only thing yes, available. For, and, but, but the fact that you're even, you know, you would even give parents healthy food to take home. Yes, so I love that. And then partnering with, with uh, FC Cincinnati and, and doing fitness classes. And so you're really looking at the whole person. Yes, I mean, it's health and wellness and then academic support. Yes, ma'am. We did an hour of reading and an hour of math every day, every day. Wow. Um, which was organized by Ashley Kennemore, our educator. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we gave the kids a chance to have fun, but also stay on track throughout the summer. That way they go to school back to uh, prepared. Um, and not fall off because it, it, right. they tend to get off track during the summer. Oh, absolutely, yes, yeah. Kids forget a lot over the summer. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. If you if you stop doing something for, for three months and then you get back to it, it's like, how do I do that yeah. math problem again? Like, what was that vocabulary word? So I think it's great that you're continuing that over the summer. And we also had a back-to-school drive at the end of the summer camp just to kind of get, you know, get the kids prepared for a great start to the school year. So. Oh my goodness. We collected okay. over 1,200 uh, items worth of school supplies. Really? We're able to give out 60 full, full backpacks. backpacks. Full you guys are awesome. We're trying. Oh my <laughs> goodness. So let's talk about peer mentoring. So um, there, are, there are a lot of students and a lot of students need mentoring. So do you need volunteers? What do you need for your, for um, high achievers aim high? Yes, we um, are always seeking volunteers, which they can sign up at our website, um, highachieversaimhigh.org. But uh, right now we are looking for sponsorships um, and any help we can get with grants and donations. 
Uh, we currently have our first fundraising event, October 27th at oh, Madison Ball. Oh, tell us Ball. about that. Oh, my, my husband's birthday. Okay. Is it okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Happy Scorpio. celebrate, okay. right. <laughs> uh, so it will be at Madison Bowl. It's October 27th from 2 to 4. Um, we are encouraging the kids to dress up in costumes so they can have a little fun during a bowling. Yeah. But it's called um, Bowling Against Bullying. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's to piggyback that. off of our peer mediation program with Clark Montessori and North Avondale. We'll, we'll be working with over 230 children. Wow. Um, so statistics show that less than half of kids report bullying issues to their parents or adults. And that's because they're either scared of what's going to happen, um, they're scared to continue with the bully, um, they feel insecure about the situation. So that peer mediation gives them a chance to work out their problems together without oh, including the adult. That way it doesn't get to the next step. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping a lot of schools pick up your model. You're in North too. Avondale and Clark Montessori right now. Yes. And this sounds like something that needs to spread to lots of schools because, you know, bullying is an issue everywhere. Every, yeah. And every school, everywhere, it's just something, I don't know if young people just don't have, um, you know, maybe the, the knowledge of, of the consequences mm -hmm. or the foresight to see this, you know, this is really serious. You can't treat people like that. But They don't understand the impact they have on another young kid because right. they're just going to school being them. Right. So I think uh, with us and going into these schools. And yeah. not realizing mm -hmm. it's how, how harmful. Well, Jeff is rushing us. So oh, we okay. have to, we're, okay, you guys are doing so much great work. But again, October 27th mm -hmm. at Madison Bowl, 2 to 4. Give us on your website. I know we can link you through WLWT.com. Give us a phone number to call. It's 513-815-5129. Uh, and tell us again. 513-815-5129. Five one two nine, and you call the number, you get all three of us. All our phones ring. We are very responsive. So if you have any questions or if you want to reach out and help in any kind of way, just contact us. Call, text, website highachieversaimhigh.org. We're on uh, Facebook and Instagram at highachieversaimhigh. So please check us out and support. So thank proud you. of you guys. Thank oh you. my goodness. Okay, we're gonna bring Ashley up here in a second. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Stick with us. We have some calendar events. Okay, I wanted you to see Ashley Kinnamore. Ashley waved to everybody. So Ashley is a third <laughs> co-founder. So just, just so excited for you guys. Okay, we Thank have some, some community Thank events. You. I'll try to get through them quickly. The Ohio Kentucky Construction Summit is Tuesday, October 23rd, 4 to 8.30 p.m. at Kingsgate. And uh, the Smitherman, Smitherman um, Albert Smitherman from Johnston Construction is gonna be the keynote speaker. You wanna go hear about opportunities there. The 10th annual Black and White Cancer Survivor Celebration, they always sell out. Now it's a whole weekend experience. It's Friday, November 2nd, 7 p.m. to 1 at Duke Energy. General admissions, $45, and that's for the, I think that's the concert. You want to call 742-4388 or 909-9575. And then the Black and White Ball is the next day on Saturday. So go to our website for more information. Have a great week. Stay safe and stay positive.